Hold on. If you don't fight it, officer, stop or you're going to get in more trouble, bro. Let me borrow your bike, man. Let me borrow your bike. I'm going to I'm going to keep my bag. I got you. Why are you? He's helping me because you kept moving. You got both on? I do. On August 4th, 2023, a significant event occurred near Western Street in Amarillo, Texas. It started with a normal traffic stop when an Amarillo police officer found out the driver had a pending warrant. When the officer tried to arrest him, the suspect resisted and ran away, sparking a high-speed chase through the city. The chase came to a stop in an alley behind Network Finance at Southwestern 34th Avenue and Southwestern Street. During a rough scuffle on the ground, the suspect attempted to snatch the officer's weapon. As the situation escalated, a courageous bystander stepped in to assist the officer. Amid the confusion, a discharge occurred, slightly injuring the officer. In a tense ground struggle, the suspect attempted to seize the officer's weapon. As the situation looked like it was getting out of hand, a quick-thinking bystander stepped in to support the officer. In the ensuing confusion, a discharge occurred, nicking the officer. Their combined efforts succeeded as they managed to restrain and handcuff the suspect. They kept him pinned down until more officers arrived. Without the bystander's intervention, things might have turned out much worse. This incident highlights the courage and quick action of both the officer and the bystander, who together helped avert a potential disaster. The bystander stayed by the officer's side until help arrived, ensuring everything was under control. The backup team reached the scene to help the officer and take the suspect to jail to face the consequences of his actions. The response wasn't small. Four or five vans arrived from various directions. Amarillo police identified the suspect as 36-year-old Lyle L. Young. He was taken to the Randall County Detention Center and charged with attempted capital murder of a peace officer, trying to take a weapon from a peace officer, possession of a controlled substance, resisting arrest, evading arrest, using a false ID, possession of substance paraphernalia, among other charges. On April 10, 2024, in South Yorkshire, UK, a high-speed chase through Parkgate caught everyone's attention. It started when a police officer from the Proactive Roads Policing Team tried to stop a white Range Rover Evoque on Dalton Lane. 
Instead of stopping, the driver sped off, going 80 miles per hour in a 30 miles per hour zone and driving the wrong way around a roundabout. The chase ended when the driver crashed and ran away on foot. Excess, excess, I've got a vehicle failing to stop. I'm Dalton Lane, Dalton Lane. It's due. Texas India, this is a strange pursuit. It's actually in reverse up Dalton Lane. And he's still in reverse on the wrong side of the road. It's temporarily high risk, back down to medium as we enter the Nationals in reverse. And it's now onto Kresik Road. It's a right, 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 Kresik Road. Kresik Road still approaching the junction with Dalton Lane. It's the left, left, left. Now Dalton Lane towards Doncaster Road. Speed is 6-0 in a 3-0. Going over the River Don. Speed is 7-0 in a 3-0. Pedestrians are light. Traffic's light. It's medium risk. He's got some ground on me. And it looks like it's going to be a decamp, decamp, and a crash, 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 out and running. During the chase, a bystander made a surprising move by offering his bicycle to the officer. With this unexpected help, the officer quickly caught up to the suspect, who had climbed a fence and was hiding in a garden. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? That's it. Get you by me. Oops. Cheers. Stay where you are! Police officer with a taser! Stand still! Stay still now! Stay still! Stay still. Get your hands where I can see him now. Do not move. Get on the floor now. On the floor. Stand by. I've got one on the floor. At this time, you're under arrest. Suspicion of theft of that vehicle. You don't have to say anything. May I defence, if you do not mention when questioned, some of you later relying in court. Anything you do say may be giving evidence. In the end, the 25-year-old man who was arrested is now in police custody, suspected of stealing a motor vehicle. The second suspect, believed to be the driver of the stolen car, is still at large. The car was later connected to a £90,000 jewellery robbery in Nottinghamshire, and the suspect is thought to be involved in that crime as well. The investigation is ongoing as authorities work to find the remaining suspect and close the case. On December 1st, 2020, in Palm Coast, Florida, a hectic incident highlighted the difficulties law enforcement encounter and the incredible help from everyday people. A car crashed into a light pole on Fieldstone Lane, leaving power lines scattered across the road. The driver, 38-year-old Jesse James P., ran from the scene. Is that him? Hey, come here. Get on the ground. Where is he? When deputies got to the scene, they caught Piva attempting to break into a neighbor's car. In a frantic effort to evade arrest, Piva headbutted a deputy and attempted to bite him. During the altercation, brass knuckles fell from his pocket, indicating he was likely under the influence of narcotics. Stop Who's fighting? Thing, I'll take you. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. We gotta get, we gotta got flip him over. Yep, I know. Right you got your taser on him or what? I got my taser on his shoulder. Okay. Alright. All right, you're gonna turn over on your stomach, do you understand? He's still resisting. Alright. Somebody right. give me an arm. Got yeah, an arm right here, right here. Right here. Right here. 
Right here. You got this him? him? Yeah, yep. that's him. Yep. You got him? Hold on. You got him? Hop off first. Okay. Yep, you got him. You got him? Yep. Okay. Okay. Which way? All right, we're gonna roll him that way. Okay. Come on, come on. Roll over. Come on, Jackie. Darn good. On your stomach. Come on. And give us your other hand. Bring, give your, bring your other hand out. Hey. All right, look, we got this arm. Come on, man. Relax. We got this arm. Give me your right. Give me your right hand. Give me your right hand, or you're gonna get tased. Come on, Jesse. Just, just do it. I got it. All right, hold tight. Keep down. All right, come on. Stop resisting. I'm securing him. Stand by one. All right. All right. All right. Stop. He's He's secured. He's secured. He's he got. What he got is in his. What he got. What he got is here. Okay, now 13 flag. Your whiskey mic secure. Sorry. All right. Okay. Okay. Is he messed up on something? I don't. I don't know. Probably. Dad said he was on meds. Yeah. Meds. Okay. 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 Despite Piva's violent resistance, three courageous bystanders intervened to help the deputy restrain him until additional deputies arrived. Their prompt actions ensured Piva was securely held down and later placed in an ambulance, where he continued to struggle even though he was handcuffed. Yeah, 13, you can clear the channel. Can you start rescue code one as well? I don't know whose keys these are. I thought I just popped Are these his? I think they thought it was pocket. I lost right, camera yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not mine. Okay. They might be, they might be his. It's not mine. It's like, what? It's okay. You'll go on. It's like, I got some other stuff. Like, what a car do. Call 24 to hold. It's not something. I got, you got rid of it. Call 24. Of course. Okay. Are you able to speak to us, man? All right. What's your name? What's your name? Hey. What's your name? Yes. What? The light will go. You're lucky. You're lucky. Alright. Dude. Okay, now 13 plug. Yeah, 13 plug. Okay, Advise rescue to stop obviously before the power lines because there's lines in the road. Like, the other side of the yeah, lines. Yeah, Help me, man. I pulled up, took off running. Yeah. I tried getting into this car, and then I grabbed it and put it down. Okay. Stop it. Get on your stomach all the way. All the way, on your stomach. Thank you guys for helping out. Yes, appreciate it. After the incident, Piva was first taken to a hospital, and once cleared, was officially arrested and faced multiple charges. These included battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest with violence, possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, possession of substance paraphernalia, and bringing contraband into a detention facility. A background check showed Piva was on felony probation and supervised release from a previous conviction for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Consequently, he was also charged with violating his probation. Piva is now being held at the Perry Hall inmate detention facility without the possibility of bond.
On December 8, 2022, in Marshfield, Wisconsin, a tense situation occurred at a local Walmart. Police were summoned to the store after receiving reports of a suspected shoplifter. A loss prevention worker told the officers that the man had concealed knives in his backpack and was still in the store. This wasn't his first offense. Just a month before, he had been detained for attempting to steal and had shoved an employee against a wall. Where is he? Uh, he's still running around the store. He keeps running between out there to the back bathrooms, kitchen knives, and then back to sporting goods. How old is this guy? If I had to guess, probably mid-30s. Me and I tried stopping him, I want to say, last month, and he actually shoved her into a the breakaway doors, knocked him off the track when we went to approach him. So that's a camouflage coat or sweatshirt, yep. or was it? Like a jacket with a camel backpack on, blue jeans, white shoes. What color is the coat? Camel? Camel, yep. And then it's got a black hood. Okay. Where was he last seen? Back by the bathrooms? Yeah. And then he started snaking back up this way, and then I saw you guys. Okay. Is there a way you can get on the backside? Probably not, huh? Like the uh, back? Unless he goes like employee stuff? Yeah, no. It'll just be out the front two doors. He Last time he had a blue Schwinn bike, he had tucked like up against the building right outside the doors. Okay. Well, we'll stick with you if you want to try to find him since we have no idea what he looks like. When the officers arrived and tried to arrest the suspect, named Seth, the situation quickly intensified. It required several officers and the surprising assistance of a courageous bystander to subdue Seth. They had to use multiple tasers to finally bring him under control. After handcuffing him, they placed Seth in the back of a police car, ending the tense incident. Yeah. Right here? <clears throat> hey, come here. Stop. Stop. He's running. A brave bystander stepped in to help the officers during the initial attempt to detain the suspect. As the situation became more intense and Seth resisted arrest, this assistance was key. The bystander aided the officers in holding down Seth, who was fighting back and being aggressive. Get a hand up on him. Get his bike. No, no. Okay. We're going to roll towards me. Get your knees under you. Thanks to the combined efforts of the officers and the bystander, they managed to subdue Seth, which led to the use of multiple tasers to get him under control. Go ahead. Hold on, I didn't get the rest of them. Oh, All right, we're going to take a little bit of standing up on here, okay? Don't watch us. Don't put cases square. Do you have anything on you I need to know about? No. Any weapons? No. Any, anything that's going to poke me or hurt me at all? No. Sorry. Open up your mouth. You got any broken teeth or anything? No. Good. <coughs> Turn your light over. All right, Seth. I'm hurt for a second, okay? Can I grab a cartridge? Up in the car, we're going to deal with that stuff in the yard, okay? After Seth was secured in a patrol car, the officers took a moment to express their gratitude to the bystander for their assistance. They approached the bystander with sincere concern, inquiring if they needed any medical attention or other assistance following the intense ordeal. All right, sir. You sure not injured at all? Oh, no, I'm not okay. injured. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interfere. Yeah, Bobby. No, yeah. no, you... Thank I you? just wanted to make sure you didn't get hurt at all or oh, anything, no. but... No. And basically, were you coming in or leaving? I was coming in and I saw him running. I saw the officer go up against him and he started fighting the officer. So I tried pulling him back and then uh, I went down and he fell over my legs. At that time, I saw a knife, which I pushed off to the side. Seth was first taken to the emergency room at Marshfield Medical Center for medical clearance before being moved to jail. He was facing several serious charges, resisting an officer and causing a soft tissue injury, carrying a concealed knife, retail theft under $500, 
disorderly conduct, and resisting or obstructing an officer. Court records indicated that these were all repeat offenses. Ultimately, Seth was convicted of retail theft, disorderly conduct, and resisting or obstructing an officer. In Heber Springs, Arkansas on April 21, 2022, Corporal Griffin pulled over a vehicle for following too closely and making an improper pass. What could have been a minor infraction quickly turned into something much more complicated. 25 at Roadrunner, Parkinson Adam Hall, 930, into the CRV white. The officer detects a strong odor of an illegal substance coming from the vehicle, which he believes provides probable cause for the improper driving. However, the driver appears to have a different interpretation of the law. Fort Griffin State Police reason I stopped you. You're following too close, driving on the shoulder, and you passed on the shoulder. Any reason for the hurry today? Do you need anything else? I need your insurance oh, registration. Sorry. Any reason you don't have your seatbelt on? I took it off because I was getting my wallet out. I didn't see that. Oh, well, that's on you. I don't believe it is. I need your insurance also. Is the vehicle insured? Yes, sir. Is it on your phone? Oh, no, don't give me. What's the problem today? You just don't like to follow the rules? You drive how you want to and everybody else has to follow them? You get out of your way? I smell the odor coming from your vehicle. Before I conduct a probable cause search on your vehicle, is there anything illegal in it? I'm not asking you for consent. I'm telling you I smell. I'm not giving you consent to search my I'm not, vehicle. I don't need consent. I've got probable cause. There's a difference. I understand, sir. But obviously you don't understand what probable cause is. Yes, sir. Probable cause is me walking you past somebody on the shoulder at an intersection, following too close, and I stop you. That's probable cause. I can understand that, sir. Probable cause is me smelling coming from your vehicle. Not consent, sir. That's not a consent question. Hang on a second here. Do this again. Go ahead and step out of the car for me. Hang on, let me get this on report. We can do this all together. You can report if you want to. I don't care. Uh, step out of the vehicle. Well, we're going on record that I'm not consenting to Step answer. out of the vehicle. That's your option. No, you can say please, sir. I do not have I'm not asking you please. I'm telling you step out of your vehicle. I know my law. I know my rules. And I know right. that I... You're under arrest. The officer then decides to arrest the driver. However, the driver refuses to exit his vehicle without putting up a fight, making the situation unnecessarily difficult. Fortunately, help is on the way for Corporal Griffin. Yeah, baby, you're under arrest. What? Sit down. Let me call my lawyer right now. Let me call my lawyer. I said, set your phone down. Get out of the vehicle. Calm down. I know you're trying. Yeah. Keep trying. Why are you trying to fight? Really? Yeah, vehicle. Sir, let me call my lawyer. You need a lawyer. I need to call my lawyer. You have your lawyer after you're done. No, I'm calling my lawyer. No, you're going to jail. What you doing? No, sir, you are, you are physically assaulting me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yeah, vehicle. No, sir, you are physically assaulting me. Sir, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Get out of the vehicle. No, sir, I'm not. Yeah. Come here. Get out of the vehicle. Sir, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respectfully ask you, sir. Get out of the vehicle, man. What are you fighting for? What's going on? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. No, bro. Get out and does what he tells you. Turn around. Sir? Let's oh. go. Hold on, sir. You don't fight an officer. Stop. You're gonna get in more trouble, bro. Hang on. Hang on. Back to the back here. You got it? Yeah. Oh, shoot. As the driver tensed up to resist being pulled out, a helpful bystander decided to step in and assist the officer in getting the suspect out of his vehicle. Even before the handcuffs were on, the driver remained flippant and condescending, which made it all the more satisfying to see him finally placed in the back of a police car. I didn't know if he was reaching for a gun. I'm gonna I just saw him fighting. 
me just being an idiot. Uh, just so you know, the only reason I drove by the arm, I didn't know if he was trying to get a on you. When I drove by, I seen him pulled over. I thought maybe he was going for a so that's why I stopped. I got my baby in the truck and let me get your information before you take off and just talk and help me. I do appreciate the help though. Yeah, the reason I went over is back to my farm. Appreciate it. Laying on the back of the farm or something. I can't tell what's going on. I just saw him fight me like crazy. Yeah. I didn't know what he was doing. I just saw him fight me like crazy. I can smell it. And his car told him to get out. He went up. He's probably got a bunch of more stuff in there. Probably does. 19 to 16. 10 19 down here. Hey boys, location. Uh, between the sewage ponds and road runner. I hope you understand why I drew my. I didn't know if he had I seen you clearing the car and him pulling over the side. I thought he was grabbing. I was worried about you, man. No, I appreciate you. I thought he was going to see you or something. I appreciate the help. No, no, I was just about to throw this in here, but I don't know. I see you fighting you like crazy, man. No, I do appreciate it for sure. Oh, you need anything from me? Or you need yeah, I need, your, I need to get your ID. Okay. That way, I can put you down and oh, just help me. You were over there, somebody take off without you? This your truck here? No, no, I'm not right. Okay. Okay. I lost my wallet. I just took my daughter to lunch and I had it out there. Honey, got eat. I'm sorry, dude. No. I'm shaking, man. I thought he was going to do something. Go ahead. That's scary, man. Take the thing now. Send me an answer. I thought I was about to see I thought somebody was going to see somebody. I thought somebody was going to see somebody. I scared the hell out of me. You know what's going on? My wife gave me some shit. She said, I'm going to go for a party. I ain't got a chance to. Because I know uh, I got another off on the way out there. I shot a guy here down here and my buddy missed it when we patted him down on the stuff. That came good, man. He thumbs up with him. He fucked my dad for no reason. I'll get him out. Sergeant. Can I see him up there? He's jerking around doing something. Yeah. I want him to turn on you. No charges were ultimately filed against the driver, but Corporal Griffin was still grateful for the bystander's assistance. In June 2020, a helpful civilian in Atlanta stepped in to assist an officer after a fatal incident. When 21-year-old Nicholas Fono was spotted, he started to run. Hey, go over by Old Fourth War Park, Grant. Hey, let me borrow your bike, man. Let me borrow your bike. Let me keep my bag. Yeah, I got you. Go for it. Okay. Can you just make a left? Give some more receipts. 3613 and Boston 78. Right here? Copy, two black males between a Hispanic male on the bike outstanding. Copy, he was running up. 
as soon as I got in, he broke the units on the, like a picture up on the road. Stephen Willard, a cyclist, was ready to lend his bike to an officer in pursuit when asked. The suspect took off on a bicycle along the Beltline, a multi-use trail, leading the chase to Pont City Market. Hey, I got him inside. He's going on to Pont City Market right now. In front of the Pont City Market. Copy, boys, boys, Pont City Market. Send me a little holding on the bike. Oh, yellow bike. He's trying to park here at Pont City Market. Radio is going, he's going towards standby. He sees me, standby. Making a right on Glen Iris radio. Glen Iris, north of Glen Iris. Making a right on Glen Iris. Going towards PCM. Going to Glen Iris and PCM radio. Glen Iris and PCM. Thankfully, another officer had already apprehended Fono. According to the police, Fono was arrested and charged with felony murder, accused of ending the life of a 37-year-old man. In October 2018, in North Brunswick, New Jersey, Officer Anthony Torres was on routine patrol when he encountered a smoking SUV that had crashed into a wooded area near Finnegan's Lane. Acting swiftly, Torres and several courageous bystanders worked together to rescue two women trapped inside the vehicle. As flames began to rise, they cut seat belts, bent door frames, and pulled the women to safety just before the car was fully engulfed in flames. Their heroic actions demonstrated the remarkable impact of human kindness and teamwork in a crisis, leaving the women eternally grateful. Thirteen seconds, Joe. Put me out with a signal four. One thirty, and Finnegan. I got it, buddy. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's go. 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 let us go Pick up the 75 for the signal 4. Get the door open, man. Get him out through here. Come on. Come on, guys. The car's on fire. You got it? Here you go. Is there anyone else inside? I don't know. I don't know. My house is right there. All I heard was that. There's nobody else in the car. Everybody else. The trailer hit your car. Why is it always right here? It was that trailer. It was a trailer. Right there. Anybody see what happened? Dude, whose car is that in the middle over there? Yeah, you, you gotta move it, you gotta move it. Yeah, yo. Whose car is that over there? Yo, we whose car is that over there? That's me. Come on, let's get out of here. Imagine if these good Samaritans hadn't been there. How would the officer have managed to get both women out of the car by himself? Thanks to their assistance, the officer was able to rescue the women. However, as soon as they got the women out, the car was fully engulfed in flames. Who saw? Right so who saw? Anybody see it? No way. 
We'll tell them to get him out. That's my house right there. I was in the back. And Do me a favor, man. Uh, who you live over there? My wife and kids. Can you start calling them, tell them to get out? Get out. Yeah. yeah, and then tell, tell her. Yeah, you want me to go do it? Yeah, and can you tell the neighbor? Tell the neighbor, too, to get out. No, And nobody here saw what happened? I was just driving around. Well, I heard everything that happened. I heard the car just going right into the tree. I was just driving around. You driving that truck? Yeah. Just wait inside the truck. No, but I gotta go close. I'm going. Close. You gotta wait, dude. You gotta wait. Yeah. Too bad. You gotta wait. Just wait inside the truck. Get your thing on the lines, okay? Just as the ambulance arrived, the fire brigade was also called because the car was on fire. If these good Samaritans hadn't been there, the two women might not have survived, or could have been seriously injured or burned. They're, they're gonna get your family, all right? No, yeah, my family got out there. Okay. All right, th can you just tell them to get the neighbor out as well? All right. Yo, can you call her and just tell her to get the neighbors out, please? No dude, instead of recording it, dude, eso. hey, do me a favor. Instead of recording, start calling yeah, people, man, all right? No te preocupes, gracias a Dios que ustedes están aquí. Eso nada, eso es cosa que... How long, how long was that car there before? Because I... What happened? I heard boom. Yeah, because I saw, I saw whoever running. parked, and then I see this car here. Well, I, all I heard it happen, I, was, I just knew it. I just started running right through here, came around, and I seen them, and I just started trying to get her. The dedication these men showed in helping the officers was truly remarkable. Despite the chaos, the officer on duty meticulously gathered information from all the eyewitnesses, pieced together what happened, and determined who was at fault in the accident. Documents. Go grab me your documents. Uh, hey, Billy, can you, can you grab his documents? I still need it, though. Uh, all right. I still need it. Yeah, but I because I, I gotta figure out where her story is. So once I figure no, out her I, story. I got to do with the okay. Okay. Senora, tu puedes hablar conmigo. Tu sabes qué pasó? Yo venía, tu sabes, cuando estuvieron un poco rápido y la luz amarilla no te da tiempo a frenar. Y lo que se me acaba de leer. Y me lo trae y se me atravesó. Okay, quiet. So, estamos cruzando en frente de ti, como para acá. Ajá. Uh -huh. Tú ibas directamente para acá. Sí. So, para tú chocaste el carro o no? Yo no sé. Okay, pero esta guagua que está aquí, esta camioneta, no está, no lo viste, right? Okay. Did you see anything happen? I mean, yeah, she said she was. I guess she said she was going this way, no, and that there was a car coming. Yeah, right there. Which car? The Dodge. The Dodge. The Dodge over there. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor, man. Can you go grab that Dodge's information? Uh, nothing. I just okay. saw it. Uh, so she was going straight. No, no, she was going the same way, southbound. Uh -huh. Yes. Let me just grab your phone number, then you can go. All right. The camel's already got it. All right. He's walking across with it now. No charges were filed against her, and she was unharmed and safe. On May 2, 2022, chaos erupted at a Milwaukee intersection when a reckless driver ran a red light and collided with a police patrol car. The crash caused the police car to tip over and hit a pole, trapping the officer inside. Fortunately, nearby people quickly stepped in to help and managed to lift the car back up. The officer thanked those who assisted. Witnesses estimated the suspect's car was speeding at least 60 miles per hour. Both the officer and the 33-year-old female driver sustained non-life-threatening injuries, underscoring the dangers of reckless driving. You okay? I'm okay. Hang on. Just hang on. Hang on. Just hang on. Just hang on. Just hang on. Just hang out, just hang out. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I've never been in <laughs> a 
I've never been in a car accident. While the male officer appeared relatively calm and stable, the female officer's condition was worsening. Her increasing restlessness signaled a pressing need for medical attention. The seriousness of her situation became more evident, emphasizing the urgency for immediate first aid. Just take a deep breath. Thank you, Charles. Just take a deep breath. Just take, take deep breaths. Sorry. 5214, 
I, he didn't say much or anything. He was kind of in his wife's hands. Yes, he's been shocked a few times. One minute, 45 seconds until analysis will resume. So you guys been shocked twice? Uh, twice, maybe three. I think it was twice. But yeah, at least a couple. Come on, buddy. Thanks to the combined efforts of the nurse and the first responders, a life was saved that day. Having a heart attack while driving is incredibly dangerous, not just for the person affected, but for everyone around them. Waller was indeed very fortunate. On September 22, 2021, a state police officer in New Mexico was helping someone with a flat tire near Albuquerque when he learned from his boss that the car matched one link to a case in New York. Despite the driver's hesitation, the officer continued to assist and discovered that the driver was Haiyan Deng, wanted for murdering her married boyfriend in Queens. The officer tried to arrest Deng, and luckily, a passing stranger saw what was happening and stepped in to help. With their assistance, the officer was able to cuff Dung and found a weapon hidden in a backpack in her car. Yeah, you still, you still here? What happened? He don't come in. Oh, he's still not here? Yeah, one hour. One hour? You just 30 minutes. Okay, you want me to see if I can help you? No, my friend's coming. Okay, is he coming from Albuquerque? Ooh. Is he bringing you a flat tire? Is he bringing you a tire? Hey, you can bring me the, you can bring you can take me go here. You can take me go here. Thank you. Oh, you want me to take you yeah, there? Yeah, you take me. Oh, well, um, let I'm, me see. I, I, but are they still going to come get you? Yeah, he come here. I, he will get the car go. Oh, okay. You take me? Uh, I don't know yet. Let me see. Uh, let me see what Let me see what your car looks like. See, maybe I, ha I have a tire. I can help you with it. You can help me? Yeah. I see. Ooh, you did a good job. What happened? Stand, stand over here out of the street, okay? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah? Let me see if I could take you there to Manal. You, you take me out? Yeah, and I'll be able to take you. Another one? Yeah. Initially, the officer's interaction with Dung seemed normal. She appeared innocent, spoke politely, and acted confident, giving no indication of her criminal background. However, once the officer recorded her car number and sent it for routine checks, the situation took a serious turn. It's only that side? Yes. Let's see on this side. This side, okay. Oh. Just this. You don't have one inside there? No. It's just a uh, bump. Let me see, let's go over here and then let me go see if I could get a, a tire and they could come fix it for you and you could just go. Let's go over here. Where are you coming from? Let's walk this way. Where are you coming from? I think my bed. Oh no, I'm gonna go see if they could get a, a, a tire for you. No, I think my bed. No, you don't need your back. What, uh, where are you coming from? I'm from You're coming from Pennsylvania? How far? How many? After some small talk, the officer discovered that Deng was wanted for a homicide in New York. The officer cleverly kept the conversation going and asked about her name while waiting for backup. Despite Deng's attempts to act casually and move towards her vehicle, the officer wisely kept her away, aware that there could be danger inside the car. What was your name? What's your name? Juan. Juan? Juan. Juan? W-A-N-G. Oh, W-A-N-G. I'm Selena. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. They're checking right now to see if they got any tires. How long he can? They're, they're right here in this next town right here. Okay. They're coming here? They're coming here. If they have one. Could be one hour? No, not one hour. Less than one hour. Yeah. Because it's just right here in the next town. They're going to call me back. So I get the car? Is Are you cold? cold? Oh, okay, hold on. Just wait for a minute. Is it cold? Aren't you from Pennsylvania? It's not cold there? Oh, no. It's warm? I go to the car and take the clothes. Oh, you need clothes from there? Oh, okay, hold on. What did, you, what did you need from there? What? What did you need from there? What do you need from there?
Well, just hold on, okay? Right, right here. Wait, right here. Right, right here. I don't know, because I don't know what's in your car. Hold on. You just need a sweater? Yeah. Okay, is it in the front or the back? Yeah. Let me see. Hold on. Okay, well, I don't I don't know what's in there. I just got to make sure there's no one else or anything else in there. You can over eight. Okay. Just for right now, let me see if um, your hands. Let me see your hand. Why? So I'm going to just detain you for a little bit until I figure out what's in your car. What? Let me see what's in your car, and then I'll get you your jacket. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell? Why? Huh? Because I'm going to see what's in your car. Why, why you... Huh? Why you cut me? No, I'm going to just detain you for I can see. Get your sweater. Yeah, but... The, what, what, why you cut me? What? Why you cut me? Because I'm going to get your sweater. Deng's fear was clear when the officer mentioned checking her car. Thankfully, the officer didn't let her open it, suspecting there might be something dangerous inside. Handcuffing Deng proved challenging, but a good Samaritan stepped in to help with the task. It's in your car. Ow. You're not going to get back. You can see it. OK. You can see it. I hold on. OK. You, you can see it. Turn around. OK. Turn around. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Stop. Get on, uh -huh. your get on your belly. Stop. Oh, I Stop. I know. What happened? You? Ah, 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 ah. Stop. What happened? Tell Stop. me. I don't know you. I don't know you either. But Stop what? moving. Because you kept the moving. Who are you? I'm helping the cop. Stop. Get up. Get up. A man suddenly appeared to assist the officer, explaining that he saw the struggle to handcuff Dang and came to help. Despite not being in uniform, his bravery and kindness were evident. I'm gonna stand right here. Come on. He's good. He's good. He's good. I appreciate you. Are you okay? Yeah. When I was, com I was coming down the road, and I looked over and I saw you wrestling with her. I hit the shoulder and backed up and ran over here to help her. I appreciate you. Man. Yes, ma'am. I remember Where are you. From you. New I Mexico, talked, here? Yeah, I talked to you at the Maverick station on Montebo that morning when the weather was all nasty. I don't remember, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's no big deal. You were dealing with all the big wreck and the big pile up and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, I remember your face. So. I told you not to get in the car. You kept on trying to get into it. You're just gonna wait here, okay? You good? Oh yeah. Sorry, dude. No, nah, dude, it's all good. I heard I heard you guys running cold that way. I was like, okay, I know they're close. After searching her car, officers discovered a weapon inside. Imagine the potential danger if she had been roaming freely with a weapon. Fortunately, thanks to the efforts of both the officer and the Good Samaritan, Dung was handcuffed. She now faces charges for resisting arrest and is awaiting extradition to New York to face murder charges. This is Jonathan Bays, a courageous citizen who put his life on the line to save strangers. On February 18, 2022, officers in Mesa, Arizona, received a call about a house fire near Gilbert Road and Southern Avenue. They quickly headed to the scene. Is anybody else in there? Who else is in there? Huh? There's kids? In this one? Is this connected? I don't know. I have no idea. What about in the back? Where's that? They're in the back room. I'm being told that there's kids in the inside. They're in the back of the apartment. We got people back here. 
Come to the window! Come, come to the window! The building wasn't empty. Inside, two little girls were screaming for help as loud as they could. That's when our good Samaritan, Jonathan Bays, arrived at the scene. Do we have a ladder or anything? No, I don't have a ladder. Are they spraying fire? Uh, the kids are in here. Get a ladder. No, I need a ladder. Anybody got a ladder? Is there a ladder? No, Walt is in the room with her. Pull it. Hey, how do you Pull it out. Come on. I can handle it. Tell him to come to the window. Come on. Too big a 19. Call fire. We need uh, water in this window. We got kids. You're still on channel one. Are you able to push over to item seven? Russia, Johnny. Bigger 19, tell them we need water in this furthest west window. We got babies. Give it to me! Give it to me! Give it to me! Give it to me! I got it, I got it, I got it. Go, 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 go! Come on, baby. Come on. Who else is up there? Okay. Where's your sister? I'm gonna go up front. I might have caught her. That's okay. I need, I need better. No, I don't. Together, they rescued a two-year-old girl, but her six-year-old sister was still trapped inside and needed to be saved immediately. Hey, is there another kid in there? There's not. Hey, come here, boss. Come towards me. You got a kid? Get out. There's a kid in here. There's a kid in here. Come out here. Come out here. Let's go. No, 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 no. Hey, come here. Oh. Oh. Let me see. Let me see. Give me the baby. Here, here, here. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Get on out. Bye, Barry 16. I got the girl out. Male is now coming out as well. Get on out, boss. Both children and the officers were treated at the hospital for smoke inhalation. Jonathan Bays was honored by city officials for his heroic actions. On May 29, 2022, officers from the Lake City Police Department responded to a call about suspicious activity. They found the potential suspects and, after searching their vehicle, uncovered a significant amount of illegal substances. We lost? No, it's just on our Oh, okay. I stop here and get some water for these people. You know these people? No. I asked if I could get some water, though. Hey. Okay. I said I could. Okay. So it's running hot. Okay. So, I was just wondering. It just ran hot when I got behind you? No, it's been running hot. So I pulled over. Okay. Light 411. Oh, Turn around for me. What have I done? What have I done? I'm what have I done? Like what? Where you can turn to on it? Like I'm 40 coming over here. Whiskey, Mike, whiskey, Fox, everything. Okay. Why are we arrested? That's tough. Why are we being arrested? I don't know. Obviously, there's a reason for her to be detained. So, here, let, let go of this. There's a reason y'all pulled in. I'm not dumb. Okay. The officers will now inspect the vehicle. She took some oh, to the right. Which I think it might be the meth that I found right here. On the ground. Probably. But as soon as I got out and I walked around, she lit down over here somewhere. Oh, right here. Look. Oh, perfect. Uh, and you saw her? Down she was, right there? Yeah, she was kneeling down right here, but they saw her too. Look, Perfect, pretty right good. The okay. Hey Morgan, the bag that you got out with that you stuck in the wheel that's full of meth, 
is also. Uh, well, did you just plant that there? No, oh, we pulled it out of the willow. You planted that there on me with the dope bag that you just dropped. You know what's funny? What's what's someone else. Violation reason? Someone this else is, this is, reason this is a reason they've been pulling us over. This is a consensual no, no, encounter. No, this is called police brutality. Swear, sir. Uh -huh. Let me tell you this. This is police brutality. You cannot pull up on people <laughs> like this, like you and her are doing. You're going back to prison. <laughs> Uh, he don't know what we're talking about. It's broke. Stop and get some gloves. It's it's all on camera. Traffic violation stop. Else, you put it. It's all. What's your traffic hey. violation stop? I, it was a consensual encounter. Hey, no 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 no. What'd you pull up for? I, I don't, I don't need your a reason to pull up. I don't up need for? a reason to pull yes, up. Yes you do. Okay. Yes you do. Well, look at me. Look at me. I don't need court, court. Yes you do. Okay. Everybody else might get booed up, but I know the law. Okay cool. We'll see how far Morgan it goes. Right. It's more. Okay. Yes, okay. Do you have anything on you? Anything inside you? Anything like that? Yeah, actually, we're going to see you want to see because I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know both of y'all. This is going to be my fifth charge that I'm going to beat. That y'all planted. This is slander. This is police brutality. Latin 40, can we change the signal 31 to test me 99? It's quite a bit of bit of dope over there, dog. Hey, if it's in the car too, uh, I, I, okay. I, I, you explain it. I'm done. I didn't. I'm done. <laughs> Perfect. I'm done. Can you tell me I will see if I can fix my tank? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 She got out and put it under the wheel under, when under I pulled up. Uh, I didn't so I, anything else in the truck? No, not out of the Okay. Well, I'm going to tow the truck. Um, I'm probably going to tow the truck. Because that's we're, we're, getting, we're getting close to traffic in the mount. And, okay. Well, you were using your vehicle. She was using your vehicle to transport. And Columbia has a zero tolerance on I have zero tolerance Yeah, I know that. And I told you, like I told you last time, if I caught you slipping, you were going. Okay. Another traffic. Yeah. Hey, here you go. Magnetic box. Got some residue, but it's empty. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the lock box, the magnetic box that people always had their tracking amount of notes in, was right there at your feet. Okay. I don't. I don't cut hay after that. Okay. To do in it. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Where? All that little piece that's, of that's dirt. Not, that's not. I promise you, that's not residue. Okay, I'm gonna swab it and find out. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Go there's ahead. also another bag in, in your truck. So, what's up? It's in that temple on the dash. Oh, I don't know. I haven't got that far. Cake. 
Hey, she's kicking on your car. After discovering the illicit substances, the officers questioned the woman who was the passenger in the car. I, mean, I haven't even done anything wrong, and I can't breathe in this cop car. Are you going to stop yelling? And y'all even have a bolo. You have no reason for even a traffic violation, and yet you come two cops deep. Okay. Y'all don't have to stick to look like in court. In court? Do you know how to look? I can't we're, breathe. We're already I'm past. A I'm an innocent person you, right now. Do you want me to roll the window down? I'm a hot box putting dope on me. There's more in the car. There's traffic violation. There's more in the car. I don't give a in that car. You don't have a traffic violation to even be doing what you're doing. Okay. I just cracked no so that someone can go to. You have no ground to walk on right no, no, now. Okay. Did you hear me? Well, you'll I'll learn, you'll learn, the, you'll learn the you'll learn the law. You'll learn the law. Listen to me. I know the law. Okay. You have no ground to roll up on somebody and do what you just did. If, if you don't stop yelling, you're going to get additional. I am okay. a citizen of this whole if, country, world. I'm a human Morgan, being. Morgan, and Morgan. you're treating me like I am some criminal and I don't do anything. Are, are you going to listen to me or no? You're, you're, you're gonna, I'm, you are doing something wrong right now. You're, you're, look, you see this guy right here? You're causing a public disturbance. You're just put me in a cop car and treat me like a criminal and I didn't even do it. For you don't even have a traffic violation. We have you a traffic in amount of You have a no traffic violation. I don't need a traffic violation. Did, did, did I turn my lights on? Did I turn my lights on? You have have a reason to stop Did I stop you? Sir. Sir. Enjoy your day. Sir. Enjoy your day. Sir, listen to me. Bless me, help me, please. Did, did I stop Listen, you? Let me tell you something. Who, who stopped You're you? You're going to regret this because I know the law. Okay, who stopped you? I don't care what it is. You have to have a light up. You have to have a reason to be pulling me over to be doing what y'all just did. You, 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 you voluntarily got out of the truck and... Just so you detain me? For what reason? Because you dropped on the ground. I didn't drop nothing on the ground. Cool. Hey, where was your light? Cool. Buddy? We don't need them. Hey, where was your light? Look, yeah, I'll, I'll let you before we go. Yeah. Be honest. I'm being well, she, she don't know it either. She said it's all yours. Listen to her. It, it's not mine. I okay. promise you that. I've ever lied to you before. Huh? Have I? You're on impact release for sale, manufacture, deliver of. A long time ago. I've changed my life since then, man. I've been... You haven't changed your life if you got her in the car. I, I promise just, you. I... And the people that you had with you last time. I was just giving her a ride, man. You were just giving them a ride, too. And here we are. He was charged with trafficking medicine, possession of substance paraphernalia, and resisting an officer without violence. In June 2021, an Uber driver in Leonia, Michigan, feared for his life, suspecting that his passenger might be armed. Concerned, he called the police and pulled into a BP gas station on Schoolcraft at Farmington Road to speak with the officers. The police also spoke with the passenger, who was identified as Melvin Griffin. Yeah, three, three, two, six, five, BP, Schoolcraft, and my Uber driver. I don't know. I think something's going on with the passenger in my car. I don't know if he, I don't know. I think he got on him. I, I don't know if he's, I don't know if another guy was following us. I just got a bad feeling about this okay. this time. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he got a Oh, yeah, I mean, he been looking strange and he acting strange. Yeah. He didn't know the um the address where he was going. Yeah, dude, I mean, like I said, we're just, I'm just going here telling you what's going on. Yeah. Hey, this is I wouldn't do it. Hey, oh, well, yeah, I'm just saying, I just saw something. We're on that way. Can you just go hang out over there with my sergeant for a second? And my, and you want to go over there with him? Okay. We're just going to, because he's going to go in and out of the car. He's got to look in the car. I mean, I, you didn't do anything wrong, you know what I mean? You don't yeah, feel you comfortable? Wrong. Yeah, I'm just saying. I just saw something. <laughs> Great, oh, we got one running eastbound. One running eastbound, 2032. And anyone south? Still eastbound, black male, black hoodie. Black male, black hoodie. So many. Back north up to Schoolcraft. Three three one three seven Schoolcraft. We lost time. Okay, that three three. 
3-3-1-3-7. Griffin seemed to have gotten away from the officers, but they weren't going to give up that easily. The chase continued, but the question was, would they be the ones to catch the fleeing passenger? Back in the car. I think I think I'm gonna fit it here. Three. We're at three three zero three zero industrial. Ten four. While the two continued the chase on foot, the officers from earlier were searching in their cruiser. Fortunately, they spotted the suspect. By then, he was too exhausted to try running away again. Right there, right into the bushes. Right, stop. 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 I got him here. In the back of the industrial. Turn around. Okay, Turn around. Subject on industrial. We're trying to find you back. Ready to go secure. Stop. Say three is welcome. Stand up. Are you injured at all? He got a little bruise on his head. Hello. Yep. I feel like dispatch don't want an address for him. I just, no. Huh? Why don't I just re air it? Right there. Radio 3, we're at 3303 industrial. 
Do you want to search him? Yeah, I'm going to search him. We already searched him there. I don't know where he's straight up from us. Do you have warrants or something? Can you stand upright? As Griffin flailed around on the police car, he was thoroughly searched for any illegal or dangerous items before being placed in the back. If you're curious whether he actually had a firearm, stay tuned. Soon, you'll find out if the taxi driver's suspicion was right. That's why. Uh, uh, There's no need to cry. I mean, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Started and I heard on foot. Is anyone up there still? No. Brendan, since you have your car here, can you run and make beep beep? I don't know about the stuff came back here, bro. You want a window crack? Yeah. All right. Why'd that all happen? I mean, it's not necessary. I mean, you don't got to be in out of breath and all that stuff. You still will. I said. It's not really necessary, all the running, because now you're just in jail and out of breath. Where are your warrants out of? <clears throat> Detroit and Farmington. Detroit and Farmington? Neither of them are probably launching even. What are we waiting for? Huh? I said, what are we waiting for? Our sergeant. Oh, so sorry. Hail we pull up and Al is on top of him yeah. and nobody else is in sight. As Griffin quietly cries, revealing a stark contrast to the tough guy image he had been projecting, the officers continue to question him about his suspicious behavior. It's not surprising to find out he has warrants, which likely explains why he tried to flee. Soon after, he begins drooling and dribbling like a toddler, likely trying to fake illness, but the officers remain unfazed. Done with you. Let me ask you a question. It's not it's not nothing criminal or anything, but were you thinking about taking that officer's car when you walked over the door? Huh? Were you thinking about taking that hopping in the officer's car when you walked over the door? Yeah. You just walk you walk right up to the driver door and walk behind it and weren't thinking about hopping in? Well that's uh, why would you run? Why would you run from the cops when you're having any trouble? Are you a well we were out with you for ten minutes and there were real problems. You were doing
Jason. Melvin, can you look at me? All you're spitting up is mucus and saliva. You're not throwing up. Just go get booked in at the jail. If you want to get medical attention, we'll give it to you. But if you're doing this because you think you're going to get out of a charge, it's not going to work. I'm hot as All right, well, what do you want? You want us to serve an ambulance for you? He went in that gas station over there. He had a coat over his hand too. When he in the gas there. station? He had his coat over his hand when he went in the gas station. Is there anything in here? I don't know. They searched the car. Did that kid come in here? He was. He was around over here. Do you, you have video? What? 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 They had a return on him though. Did they? I think so. Well, went, back, went back up then. Do we have anything further further on that fusion that was following him? No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the whole entire the whole entire story if it makes sense. Right. Using like faces. Yeah. But he um he just said it was a ten hour fusion and then it went it was gone. Went when they, yeah. on the went that way. So, were, so he got dropped off. Where'd you drop him off at? A weapon with an extended clip was found inside the cab. One bystander mentioned that Griffin had been walking with a coat over his hands, possibly to hide the weapon. While his intentions with the weapon remain unclear, the Fraser Police Department reported it as a stolen firearm. Griffin was brought to court on July 15, 2021, for a probable cause hearing, where he was charged with resisting and obstructing officers and carrying a concealed weapon. Thanks to the brave taxi driver, who had the courage to alert the officers about the man with a hidden weapon and outstanding warrants, the situation was handled safely. Our next story is from New Mexico, where a quick-acting Good Samaritan saved an officer's life during a violent confrontation. This happened on August 19, 2021. Officers were called to a robbery scene, and Officer Mario Verbeck was there talking to the victim. Over in front of my vehicle. Okay, you got us going around on the goose case. It's not bad. Uh, hands out of your pocket. Do you have any identification to say who you say you are? Uh, no, sir, I don't. But I, it's at home. I have my birth certificate out with me, so. All right. Let's find out some things first, okay? I'm Officer Burbank with Albuquerque Police Department. So apparently, you called us reference of some type of stolen merchandise, or it was my PlayStation or something, I don't know what show. So I don't know the story. I was at home, so that's why I'm going to ask this show. Okay. So I what's your name first? Nathaniel? Nathaniel Paul Cupid? Nathaniel. So, okay. So what happened? But where did this happen at? So at my house, I got dropped off. Uh, I was catching a bus up from Central, uh, 301 Western Skies Drive, okay. Southeast. And I was walking and I see these two guys and they asked me if I wanted drugs and I was like, no sir, I don't. And I was walking off and they called me again and then they walked up to me and pulled out a weapon. Wait, when did they walk up to you? Uh, at my house, just... Okay. I don't, your house or... Not at my house, just like... Or house. The on the There's a difference. Just at the street, okay. by the street. Uh, the street. So, okay. Where in the street? In front of where? You got so behind, behind, behind I, don't, I don't know, sir. That's what I'm saying. So behind this, uh, the 7-Eleven, right there, close right there by the apartment. So in the intersection there, up of yes, sir. Just by Central the and Western Skies. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't yes. know what address you were on. If you were in yes, front sir. of the apartment complex, inside the or well, I was just approaching the apartment complex, and then they just did it right there. So yes, that's 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 all okay. I know. So you know who these guys are? No, sir. And how many of them? The victim told Officer Verbeck multiple times that the men who robbed him were just down the street and still had his belongings. Despite this, Verbeck chose to keep interviewing the victim. Because I know what you guys are trying to do. Sorry. I know. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, Nathaniel. 
What were you guys going to do by yourselves? Nothing. We were going to call you like how we did now. Literally. They literally were at the Circle K and we talked to you guys on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. We literally so. gave y'all a lead. And y'all say y'all have the wrong people? They, they're they're out with them right now and they put them with them. Sir, we would literally buy the family dollar. My friend will come out here and explain it to you. And I'm going to put that on the report. Uh, the the thing is, you got to understand. That was well, my... wait, let me, let me find... I'm, I'm actually now, I'm questioning you. Yeah. You have the intentions. Mm -hmm. The time delay comes in the factor. Okay? The time delay comes in the factor. Yeah. Number two, you're still a victim. You're still a victim of robbery. So the report is going to be made of being you were robbed. Okay? Now, we're trying to figure out... Do you look... You sure you don't know these guys? They're not I the don't, that You don't owe them money? They sir, don't know whatever. This I, happens a lot down there in that area. Sir, I am a football player at Fonsanos. Okay, okay. Right. Why would I be in any type of game related when I'm in, when I'm in football? Right. Okay. I literally now, caught up to... I literally caught the bus all the way up to Central where my home was at. Walk out. I'm walking with my shoes and my backpack. Okay. Out, out of the bus? Yeah, yes, sir. I walk and I walk behind the 7 Eleven, I get robbed, I get a gun pointed to my okay. face. And, and I had to give delivery, give my backpack to him and my shoes. And, 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 then, and then we find them again, and then you guys say those are the It's not key. them. It's not them. The interview continued for nearly 20 minutes until Officer Verbeck noticed the suspects walking towards them. He then got into his vehicle and joined another officer named Eichel. Together, they chased the suspects through an alley to the back of a tire shop. Right there behind the bushes, like this one's behind the bushes there. chase escalated into a confrontation when one of the suspects, James Ramirez, began firing. Both officers were hit and seriously wounded. Officer Verbeck took cover in a bush, and Officer Eichel ran to safety. After firing at the officers, Ramirez fled south to a Dutch Bros parking lot. There, he was trapped by two other officers, with more on their way to assist. He ran. Adam 532, he's gonna be behind. Adam 532, he's gonna be behind Federico. A local Albuquerque resident, Johnny Garcia, witnessed the chaos. Seeing Officer Verbeck wounded in the bushes, Garcia jumped over his backyard wall and rushed to help him, ignoring the danger to himself. He stayed with Officer Verbeck, calling for help on the radio as the violence subsided, waiting for the right moment to move. I think you're in there. Okay, let's go. You still can't see your daughter. Let's head him. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. So we need 134. I'm summer, I'm on to go. Right here, right here, right here. Go, go, go. Right, We're in the parking lot of the Napa. Right here, right here! Hey guys! Hey! Hey, he's right here! He's right here! Do we have to get this? Can I buy some of your Go ahead, here. While Officer Verbeck was getting life-saving emergency treatment, James Ramirez was running low on both time and bullets. Drop the he said, I can't see the Do not reach for that I can't tell. I can't see the Do it now! Drop it! Did you see the sergeant? I can't clear his hand. 
Looks like it might be in front of his stomach. I can't tell. I can't tell either. Roll him away from the We will get you medical right help. You want me to shut down north now? After Ramirez was subdued and the situation was under control, he was quickly arrested. Officers Verbeck and Eichel were transported to the hospital and eventually recovered from their injuries. Officer Verbeck formed a lasting bond with Johnny Garcia, the man who saved his life. Garcia was later honored for his bravery in saving an officer. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.